For SunSentinel.com, this is Ira Winderman with your latest Ask Ira, Miami Heat mailbag. Our first question today comes from David who says, I wonder if Mickey Arison's comments are really a preemptive move in anticipation of a lawsuit by Chris Bosch and or the union, who are bound to claim that he never wanted Bosch to return or intended to allow him to play in order to get out of his contract. David, I think a lot of people, and I understand why, are reading too much into Mickey's tweet. I think it was simply a team owner saying, hey, we'll see you in training camp. Remember, players still have to take physicals in order to get on the court during training camp. So there'll be a lot more known, a lot more learned by the start of that training camp. I think for right now, the Heat are basically trying to embrace Chris Bosh in any way they possibly could while also appreciating with so much convoluted language in the collective bargaining agreement that getting out of Chris's contract, or at least his salary cap hit, is not going to be easy. The way I look at it, I would put it this way. Mickey Harrison said, looking good, CB, and looking forward to seeing in camp. And I don't think in 140 characters, the Heap are trying to spell out their policy regarding Chris Bosch moving forward. Our second question comes from Leon in Miami, who says, Sometimes one does not have to be a rocket scientist to see what's happening with Chris Bosch and the Heat. Why would Bosch's wife tweet backhandedly at Mr. Arison? And remember, Dwayne Wade's wife tweeted not even a phone call. Think the triad is finished with Miami. LeBron James and Wade are gone. Bosch wants to go and the Heat should facilitate it. Leon, I admit that it is a different atmosphere that Chris would be returning to if he returns from this latest incident with blood clotting. Obviously, Dwayne Wade is gone. Obviously, the dynamic has changed from the Big Three era. But I think that's a separate issue. Right now, remember, Udonis Haslam is the only teammate who remains from the Heat's last visit to the NBA Finals. I think right now, it's more about Chris Bosh finding his way with the Heat through a health standpoint before letting anything else get contentious. But I do agree. From what Pat Riley had in place before, to what Pat Riley has in place right now. This is a different Heat family, quote unquote. And I think that alone by itself could require some adjustment for Chris Bosh. And our last question comes from Brian who says, where do you think the Heat's motivation lies? Ensuring that Chris Bosh is healthy enough to play or regaining a salary cap space in February? Look, I don't think, Brian, there is any issue. This is about health. If this was purely a money issue, The Heat could have had Chris Bosh back on the court during the playoffs, maybe won that Game 7 against Toronto and gone to the Eastern Conference Finals. Either way, the calendar on his clock would have allowed the Heat to potentially realize salary cap relief by the 2017 offseason anyway. Yes, there is an ancillary business side to this equation as Chris Bosh continues his workouts. And that's something the Heat have to keep an eye on as well. This is a business for Pat Riley in the Heat front office, and they have to understand that. For example, in any business, if someone was ill and you thought they would miss time, you have to prepare for an alternative and what else you're going to do. So I would put it this way. The Heat are monitoring the books, but they're monitoring the books in conjunction with the greater issue of monitoring Chris Bosch's well-being. Those are today's three questions. We'll be back tomorrow with three more. For SunSentinel.com, I'm Ira Winderman.